So what we are going to try to do, and let's all cross fingers, we just have 13 minutes to do that, is we're actually going to build our own chatbot on enterprise data. Um, I come from Prophecy, I'm one of the co-founders here sitting a little bit more on the technical side. So what I've decided to build is a chatbot that answers directly questions from uh, our support teams, right? It's trained directly on our data. And you have a template available right here. If you're looking down at your laptop, start forking it and building it in Prophecy. Otherwise, of course, you can do it uh, later as well. Uh, so let's go ahead. You can start from templates. I'm just actually going to start completely from scratch. This is the Prophecy tool, but everything that we'll be doing is gonna be ge going to be generating high-performance code on Git as well. Uh, so let's go ahead, start, start a brand new project from scratch. Uh, this is going to be my DIES uh, generative AI chatbot. Now, I'm a good engineer, so I want to store everything on my GitHub, so I'm just gonna connect directly to my Git. I have here a completely empty repository that later on we can actually deploy our code from and just productionize it uh, really simply. So let's go ahead and, oh, sorry, project already exists. I was running this demo many times before the session, so let's go ahead. Perfect, so now we have our project. And so as Raj was saying, there are really two core components to what are we going to be building. Um, one component is the ingestion pipeline. We're actually going to look at some of the data from Asana, Notion, Coda, Slack messages, our documentation, vectorize it, ingest it. And then the other pipeline, the other component is the streaming pipeline itself, right? So read messages directly from Slack, uh, look up vectors, formulate the answer with OpenAI or whatever model you'd like, and then start sending them out. That sounds like a lot of work. Well, let's get started. So here is my first ingestion pipeline. I'm just going to focus on my web data first and our open documentation. Perfect, so this is the tool itself. Uh, now, where I'm gonna get this documentation from? Well, Prophecy already has public documentation. I have here this sitemap index that contains links to all of my pages. So I can just start directly load it, loading it up. Okay, so what we're going to do is just create the first component that's going to start ingesting the data in. Let me just connect to my Spark cluster, perfect. Everything is going to be running on Spark natively. Um, and let's just start loading it up. So this is my first source, it's just a web page, nothing fancy, here's the sitemap. And I can quickly look at the schema under the hood. Everything is being processed as data frames, right? So it doesn't matter how big your documentation is or how many messages you have on Slack, it'll work really, really well. Um, so here should be my sitemap. We just saw the schema. Here is the actual sitemap. Oh, so this actually appears as binary data. No problem at all. We can just very quickly turn it into a string. Um, everything that we are doing very, very much, I'm sure, reminds you of just standard data processing. Right, so I can just cast this directly uh, to my string. Perfect. And we can actually quickly look at uh, the data. Now while this is loading, awesome. So we have our actual sitemap, wonderful. Let's just store it on our DBFS so that we can use it for later. Okay, we can see all of our files right here. So let's just put it here. This is our web index. Let's make sure to override this data. And there we go. Now we are actually storing that very first file on our source. Uh, next thing, this is an XML file, right? So I would actually start li like to start loading this up as an actual XML and processing it link by link and start scraping that data. So we can go ahead and load up the XML source. As you can see, Prophecy has tremendous amount of sources here, right? So it's actually very, very easy for you to just focus on whatever kind of data you're really working with. Uh, if I look at that sitemap really quickly, there is those URL fields, right? So I'm gonna be fetching all of those URLs stored within those locations. So now we have those uh, locations, perfect. We can just load them up and start looking at it. And there we go, so this is our every single page. What do we do next? Well, we actually want to start storing all of that wealth of content directly on our, uh, uh, on our data catalog, right? On our Unity catalog. So let's, let's go ahead and start scraping, scraping it. Before we do that, there is a bunch of pages that I would actually I, I, like to ignore. Uh, they all start from this tags page. There is nothing useful there. 
so I can just very quickly filter out this data. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's filter this data out. Perfect, so any URL that starts with that particular string, we're just going to throw out. Okay, and now we are gonna be seeing significantly less rows showing up, awesome. So now we can actually start the process of text scraping. Prophecy features those super useful gems. Normally you would have to start writing APIs, looking for libraries that you, you need to use. Here you just drag and drop and pick the operation that you would like to do. In this case, I would just like to scrape every single one of those uh, URLs. So I can just do uh, directly that. And let's look at the schema on the other side for every single one of those pages. There we go, so now we have our result content. Awesome, um, just to speed up the development process itself, instead of working on everything, I'm just gonna focus on the first 10 pages just to speed it up, but then we're gonna run it on the full data sample as well. So let's scrape just the first 10 pages and look at how that content looks like. Perfect, so now we have our pages. Those pages are actually fairly long. Some of them are over um, you know, 10,000 characters. They are not going to fit within our model, so we need to split them up a little bit as well. Let's add another text processing gem uh, that's going to split our text into smaller 1,000 character long chunks. Okay, let's look at the schema of it, make sure that that looks good. And perfect, now we have arrays of uh, those chunks. Now because this is array data, we would like to flatten it, so really quickly we can do that. Let's flatten that data set while preserving the actual uh, location as well. Okay, so now we have our chunks, those are just long arrays of text, right, unstructured data. Let's run this really quick and make sure that now perfect. So now we are having actually more rows showing up and that's because we've split them up into smaller chunks. Awesome, so what's the next step? Well, now we can actually start vectorizing our data. So I can just drag and drop our OpenAI component here. Uh, you can use whatever models you'd like. If you have you know, $100 million on the side, you can train your own model as well or you can just use something out of the box. Uh, so let's go ahead and here use just the standard text embeddings, the ADA model uh, directly from OpenAI. And let's look at the schema. Now we'll be able to start seeing all of those embeddings show up in real time for us. Perfect, we have our uh, OpenAI embeddings. Let's look at how they look like as well. Okay, there we go. Now for every single one of those documents that we scraped and cleaned up, we start to see uh, the embeddings themselves, right? Perfect, they are 1536 um, uh, floats long, um, and now we can start feeding that data directly into Pinecone. Before, before we do that, I would, actually, I, I would like to actually start giving it some unique IDs as well. Um, so let's make sure to add our uh, content URL, and let's add an ID as well. So I can just call it uh, this is going to be focused on my web document, so I can just say, hey, this is web, and then just give it some uh, ID. Okay, perfect. With that, now we can start writing this data out directly to our catalog. So let's just create a brand new table. And this is our uh, data with all the embeddings. So I'm using here Unity catalog. I can just pick my catalog uh, default schema, and then just use, um, I can use one of the tables that already exist. Dice content, perfect. Okay, awesome. So now we have our table that actually contains the content of the posts, the embeddings themselves. I think I forgot the embeddings. The embeddings themselves now will be there as well, and then um, uh, the actual unique IDs. Now here, now we have to start forwarding that data directly to one of our vector databases. Uh, there is a couple of them that we can pick. Databricks just announced their own vector search, so you can just start using this, you know, Sparks cosine similarity or Databricks' vector search, no problem at all. But here we are going to use directly uh, Pinecone itself. So I can just drag and drop my embeddings right here as a source and just start writing that data out to Pinecone. And 
sorry, I just overrode that schema accidentally. This is what happens when we're going so fast. Perfect. Connecting to Pinecone and writing, it to, writing to it very efficiently is super easy as well. So we can just say, hey, here's my Pinecone target. Normally, you would have to start calling its APIs and somehow figure out what's the efficient protocol for it from Spark. Here, you can just press, hey, here's my Pinecone connector, set up some credentials, pick what's your index name, and just start writing the data directly to it. So here's your index. And now Pinecone accepts two parameters, right? You need to have unique ID and the embedding itself. The embedding is going to be used as a lookup, and then it's gonna just return us similar pages, similar documents to our query, to our embeddings, with those IDs. So then we can start looking up those IDs directly as well. So here's our ID column, and here is our content column. Okay, in the background, while I was talking, I just ran it on the full data sample as well, so we have all the 208 rows writing already to my delta table, and now I can just run the job directly writing to Pinecone. Okay, that was a lot of work, so we've ingested our web data finally, um, lots of data pre-processing, but Prophecy makes it super easy. The other part, now the much more exciting part, it's let's start building that live structured streaming pipeline that's actually gonna connect to our Slack and start answering questions from our support team. Uh, so this is still running, I can just create a new uh, page. Okay, it's actually finished, perfect. So let's create our live chat. This is going to be a streaming pipeline. Now what do we start with? I have this channel here directly that I created uh, where I already set up some Slack credentials. It's really easy, all the instructions are out there on the internet, you can follow that as well. Um, and I'm connected to it, so I'll be able to start asking it questions. The very first thing, therefore, that I have to drag and drop onto my canvas is a streaming source that will actually start reading from my Slack directly. So I can just say, hey, here's my Slack source. Uh, let's connect back to my cluster. Sorry about that. Perfect. Okay, so here's my Slack source. I can just connect to this Slack streaming data set and it's going to essentially start picking up all the messages that are coming from my chat directly. I just have to specify my uh, token. I'm using Databricks secrets here to store all of that securely. Um, and let's look at the schema here. I think we're starting to run out of time really quickly, so I'm just gonna do a quick cheat here to load up the schema. Normally you can just press on infer schema to load it, but just to save some time, um, this is the schema of the uh, Slack streaming source directly. Okay, perfect. So now what do we have to do? Well, we have to vectorize those questions, look them up on our database, and use OpenAI to start answering questions. Couple of really, really quick and simple steps. First things first, I would like to actually focus on messages from this specific channel, and I would like to make sure that the messages are not overlapping with my chatbot itself, right? So let's make sure that the user itself is, the, is not uh, the chat interface. Okay, perfect. Now we can actually start uh, vectorizing some of, our, uh, some of our queries. So let's just use, again, OpenAI component and vectorize the question itself. I will compute the text embeddings directly on our text column, which represents the question directly from the user. Let's look at the schema, make sure that that looks good. Okay, perfect. Now we have embeddings for our queries, awesome. Uh, now, what we have to do with those embeddings, right? We have to start looking them up on Pinecone directly. So here is a Pinecone lookup component. Again, any vector database will work just fine as well. Um, let's connect to it. My index, as we've specified before, is this die is all vectors. And I'm gonna use the OpenAI embeddings. I expect some really good results coming out of this, so I'm just gonna look up a single highest similarity document. and let's look at the schema, and we should start seeing the matches directly coming out of uh, Pinecone itself. Perfect, and so now we'll have those Pinecone matches with IDs to our documents. Okay, what do we do with those? Well, Pinecones will split up a couple of different results for us, so let's make sure that first we flatten that directly into the table. So again, we need our flatten component.
And let's get the actual um, question itself as well. Okay, perfect. Now that we flattened it, we can look up those documents that uh, Pinecone found for us directly on our web embedding source. So I can just drag and drop that source and then drag and drop the join between both of those sources. Prophecy is really smart, so it automatically connects that join for you and we can just um, co uh, write the join condition itself. So this is going to be our Pinecone ID against the uh, web embeddings ID, perfect. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so now out of this join, we're starting to see the actual documents matched. Um, so the very next thing that we have to do is now start answering uh, some of those questions, right? So here's our embedding, here's the content itself. Uh, we can start, uh, sorry about that, yeah. We can start now uh, using OpenAI to uh, answer our questions. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the OpenAI component. Now we used to do embeddings, now we have to start doing the actual question answering. And here's the prompt that we are going to use. If you do want to stack up multiple prompts against each other, very easy. If you want to use some agents, some smarter uh, prompts as well, very, very easy to do that as well. And so let's pick our context. Our context is going to be actual uh, content coming out. Let me just double check that. Yes, so that's the actual content. And then the question itself is right here. Awesome. Let's look at the schema, and now OpenAI should start giving us the answers directly on the other side to the question that we are trying to phrase it with the given context. Okay, awesome. So now we have the OpenAI answer, wonderful. So we're just two steps away now from sending that answer back. OpenAI actually gives you multiple suggestions, so let's just pick the very first one. And so we are gonna propagate the channel and the timestamp of the message as well, and then let's just choose the answer. Okay, with all of that, now the final target that we are dragging and dropping is our Slack target. And so let's open that up. Sorry, just typing really fast. Okay, and this is our channel answer. Yep, that looks good. So, uh, yeah, and this is our vectorization component. Okay, we have run, we've done it really fast. Let's actually start running it and making sure that we haven't done any mistakes. Crossed fingers that's going to work the first time. So now I'm running the pipeline itself. I can see the documents already loaded up, and I can start asking my Slack questions, right? Does prophecy support custom UDFs as an example? That's one of the questions that I can ask it. And now I'll be able to also see all of those messages show up on my Spark streaming pipeline in real time, right? So I can see that, that message show up right here. Here is the event with the full payload. Here is the text of the message. Um, we did some filtering, great. OpenAI vectorized it for us. Here is the actual embedding, perfect. Uh, Pinecone found similar matches. Here is the document that matches the closest our question, and here is the score for it. We connected it with our document base, so out of the join, now we can see the actual content of the document, and we can pass it along to OpenAI to actually formulate the answer itself, and here is the answer, and going back to Slack, now I can see that our chatbot actually answered the question for us. Woohoo! Hey.